What's up guys and welcome back to the infamous project today we're going to be tackling a project that I've been wanting to do for years. When I mean years, I mean like a decade, maybe even more. I don't even know at this point. However, it's just one of those tedious tasks that we just, oh, we'll do it later. We'll get to it. Oh yeah. You know, I'll put time aside and I, I promise myself I'm going to get to it. Well, the time has finally come and I put myself in a situation that would force me to finally do this task. And sometimes that's exactly what you need to do. If you find that you're not getting motivated to do something that you know needs to be done, find a way that assures that you're going to get that task done. And that task is changing the top on the stalker vert. Now you guys might be asking, well, how did you force yourself to put yourself into the situation? Well, I did it by committing to bringing this car to Foxtoberfest 2023. And we are in the first week of September and I pretty much need to have the car there by the end of the first week of October. So I've only got four weeks to get this car ready for the show. Now I'm not expecting to overhaul the whole car or redo it and make it perfect no absolutely not the stalker vert is a car that i want to be shown and displayed as something that could just show that you can build something you can enjoy it there can be many years there can be many stories and there's this kind of constant evolutionary upgrades that are happening to the car which pretty much defines the story and the life of this car so what I've got behind me are some boxes. We have a glass rear window. So this is all made by Key Auto and LMR carries their products. I figured, you know what? I want a canvas style top or stay fast cloth as they call it. And it just looks so much more luxurious, if you will. So much more sleek and sexy. And this is actually the piece that will end up going straight across the front here the rest of the top is in this box we'll get into that in a minute then we have a glass rear window we have padding we have some liner webbing i don't know we got new cables because i know i think this side is snapped so i really can't complain this is a factory 1993 convertible top that i bought maybe in 2004, 2005. Lewis would know the answer to this. So Lewis ended up with a really nice, I wanna say it was a 90 GT and it came on a pallet. And the reason why it came on a pallet is because the car was stripped. Somebody took everything, drivetrain, suspension, brake related out of that car to build an AC Cobra kit car. And if you remember back to the early 2000s, Five O's are worth nothing. Like you could pick them up super cheap. So this guy took advantage of that, built himself an AC Cobra because who wouldn't want one of those and had a pretty reliable drivetrain as we know that the Five O heart is in fact super reliable, especially after seeing what's come out of that foxidized AKA Shipbox 2.0 project. So needless to say, he ended up with the car. We needed a donor. We needed something that was gonna give us electrical. We needed something that was gonna give us some brakes and some other tidbits. I think Lewis already had the motor and transmission at that point, but we needed a lot of parts. So I found this wild, no, electric current red, cause it was a 93 four cylinder convertible, black interior, black top. And I think we picked that car up somewhere down near Miami or on your, your way to Miami from Orlando. Anyways, picked the car up for like 1500 bucks, top down and cruised it home, stripped the car, took the parts we needed. Most importantly, I took the whole convertible top frame assembly from that car and put it onto the stalker vert here. And I kind of upset Lewis at the time because Lewis actually had spent a thousand dollars. Actually, I think maybe his wife paid to have the top done. I think that might actually be a sore point. You know, when the wife buys you something, then you end up selling the car, but we won't get into that. We won't open up old wounds. So Lewis had a brand new top on the car, but the problem is, is that 
anything pre 91, so all the way up until 90, these top frames on the older ones, like they ride up here. It's almost like having a Celine wing on your car without actually having a Celine wing. In fact, the Celine wing helps because it's so big, you know, it kind of just carries off the back. But the cool thing to have, especially since I never had a wing, well, I did have a wing on this car at one point, but not having a wing, you want the top frame that goes down as low as possible. So 91 through 93 convertible tops actually go down about six inches lower than 90 and earlier. So if you guys have a pre 91 car and wonder why your top doesn't go down as low, well, now you know. The other thing that is different by design is that the 91s through 93s, this is seamless. The earlier cars, actually, this is a staple point. And then there would be a piece of trim almost similar to this that would be here and then has like the little chrome caps at the end with a screw. And yeah, they just, they look cheesy. Actually, it's a vinyl. I think it's actually a vinyl piece of trim that goes across the top there. So needless to say, I wanted everything 91 through 93 style. That's why there's an airbag steering wheel. I've got the 93 uh, top liner on the inside, which is super rare. Only in 93 cars did they have that. But there's the story behind the top. And now it's time to change it. I haven't done the top replacement since I was probably like the actual top. This one, I swapped the whole unit, right? So I wasn't actually physically changing material. Uh, so last time I did a material swap, I don't know, I was probably 20, 21, 22, would have been in one of my yellow Dutch convertibles that I had. And I remember I did it in the driveway, normal staple gun, basic hand tools. And if I could do it when I'm 20, I'd hope that I can do it when I'm in my forties. So that's going to be the name of the game. We're going to take our time. I don't want to rip, like this top is actually not horrible. It's just kind of, what's the word, um, shrunk. So, you know, it's exposing some of the top frame and the mechanism and everything else. So we want to get something that's going to obviously sit down here, look better. And that's pretty much it. You know, I just, I want the look of the canvas top. Now, what I'm hoping is that I can maybe salvage this one enough to put it on foxidized. We'll see if that top frame even wants to like let loose and be able to come up. But that is what we're getting into. Sorry for the long winded intro, if you will. But I know a lot of people love this car. This car has been around for a long time and was kind of deserving of a little bit of context. But that's pretty much it, guys. Going to unbox everything, going to get into it and try and share with you guys as much as possible in terms of how to do this. It's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for me as well, but I will tell you this. There's, we're gonna be working in the back area here and it's pretty hot out. So I actually don't know if I'm gonna start working on this today or if maybe I'll kick the AC on or wait till it's a little cooler because yeah, we're gonna be inside the car behind the rear seat in this wheel liner getting all of the nuts off these two inner, the, these hockey sticks that are on the outside, it's the same thing. It mimics that on the inside. We'll unzip the rear window out, get the rear window out first, then we'll undo these guys. And then we'll have to get the rear windows down as this folds up and behind these pieces. So these pieces are gonna come out. And then ultimately we'll rip all the staples out of the front here, kind of fold the frame back a little bit so we have access to underneath there and then the whole skin should come off so oh there's actually a couple tie downs that go across these rails here so i'm gonna have to disconnect those those are small little phillips screws if i remember correctly it's all starting to come back to me now actually so anyways guys let's hit the intro and then when we get back if i'm in different clothes you'll know that i didn't get started if i'm in the same clothes you know that we're still filming here, same time, real time.
right, we're back. And I started just unboxing everything and I pulled out the rear glass and I'm like, oh, I completely forgot. New rear glass means no tint. And then I'm like, man, I had a roll of tint somewhere that I used on something. Hopefully I have enough. And guys, I cannot even make this up. If I rotate this to right here, I think so right there. Oh, I might have the slightest little corner exposed. I don't even think you'll see that though. Let's take a look. Yeah. Like, not that I'm trying to not cover everything, but I think, oh yeah. There's enough overlap there. That'll be hidden. Holy hell, guys. What more could you ask for? Like when you're just kind of hoping for the best to work with what you've got. So I just got to make sure that I get this done the first time and uh, that I don't mess it up. Just like that, the rear window is tinted. Damn GoPro dying on me and I was rushed because my painter showed up and he actually dropped off Chuck's front bumper cover sitting right here. So it had the famous little split right down here. So this got hot stapled back together from behind. And the reason for that crack is, guys, when you remove that structural bar on the bottom, of your GT front fascia, trying to do the old weight reduction. Thing is, the bottom of your bumper then no longer has proper support bracket, and then this starts flapping, and as a result of flapping, actually it was cracked over here as well. So I think Chuck has ordered the Maker's aluminum one, so hopefully we'll be able to get everything back intact and you won't have to worry about any more brakes. But here we are back on the vert. So time to get intimate with this, with this beast. Can you guys believe that I used to like pick up girls and fox bodies and do ungodly things? In the back seat, and especially at convertibles, just think like the front seats don't recline properly. Like, man, kind of, it's one of those things like you're surprised on what you were able to do when, let's just say, you worked with the tools and the environment that you had at the time. If there's a will, there's a way. So, if ever you guys are like, oh, I can't do that, or oh, it's too small, it's too uncomfortable, just rewind the clock back a little bit and ask yourself what a 20 year old you would have done, or even maybe younger for that matter. So anyways, get these last few screws out. If you notice, this car's even got the rear shoulder belt conversion as well. So being an 87, your seat belts normally came out through down there. Everything has been converted on this car, guys. You'd never know that it's an 87, except for the mirrors, because the mirrors are the old style, like that. The little triangles on the top, they're not the ear style mirrors that come off the doors. Okay. You can see here, this is what ultimately we need access to. We need access to all these bolts right here. That's gonna allow us to get the rear, the rear glass out. So we'll be able to unzip it along the top here and then unbolt it here. So we'll unbolt first so that that's kind of flopping. Then we'll unzip and we'll take this rear glass out. There we go. 
should be free. My apologies if the lighting isn't the greatest. There we go. Zipper still working after all these years. Whew. Oh, I feel like I can breathe a little bit, letting some air flow through. All right, so here's the rear window. Now, we are actually, this metal bar is gonna have to come off. All these staples need to come out and we're gonna have to put this onto the new rear glass. So you guys see this right here? Your rear glass slides in here is like a little bit of felt and whatnot. This is gonna be an opportunity to hit these with some fresh trim paint. So. On the back side, you got to kind of reach your hand up behind here. There's one. I can't remember if it's two, and this one's broken at the bottom. But there's two studs in the back here. Seven sixteenths. Oh, my stud's broken. Yeah see it so there's actually a spacer and a stud and there's the broken stud so that is now removed this well liner screws into there but i don't think we need access to it all right guys so here's the hockey stick area notice how there's like these shims square washers whatever you want to call them don't don't lose those okay okay so that is loose come over here gonna go through collect all my hardware so I don't lose it we've got our hockey stick areas disconnected and guys if you're ever swapping the whole top frame assembly this part you need to do there's no getting around this okay this side in here would have stayed intact and well actually we do have our a little bit of stuff there. So there's our two side pieces. So in here, there's no staples, just a little bit of glue to hold things in place. And now we're getting down. Let's get over the gutter. There we go. Pull this loose. Okay, now, if you guys have a pre-91, or you guys have a top that has something going across here, this would be the time where you take off the little screws and the end caps here, and then usually it's just like a vinyl, a pressure fit piece that goes in and you'll strip that center piece out, and then there'll be staples on the inside all the way along here. And you're gonna have to rip that thing off Whereas in this case, I don't know how, this is the first time I've done a uh, 91 in up style that has no seam here. So I'm gonna have to check into that. mine is pressure fit sometimes these are glued in okay take out your weather strip 
All right. Then we're going to be taking off all these screws all the way along here. You can see the top is helping itself down slowly. Which is fine. So we'll take all these off and then I'll show you how to get the front part off. And the lip folds down over it and keeps everything nice and concealed. And then we have the top itself, which this is stapled and glued, being an original. Oops. Try not to uh, see if I have a pry tool or something. I had actually. That's why you have hydraulics, guys, so that they can do the work for you. So. We will very so delicately allow that to come down and that is pretty much it. We can scoop our top out of there and we can assess the situation, run our new cables and um, test fit our top and see what's going on. Like in reality, a lot of the padding and stuff is actually still intact. All right, so place the new top on just to make sure, well, that it's the right top. They have these little strings inside the channel and the new top so you can pull your cables through. So I've already pulled that one through. So you can see there, kind of nifty, nice of them to do that. And I've got the old top laying on the ground here. And what we're going to have to do is get our channels here, our tack channels. So we'll be prying all these staples off on both sides. And similarly, got to do the same along the back for the rear window one. So we can staple our new fabric to these tack rails. And then that way we will hopefully have everything ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead, pull all this stuff off now and so interestingly enough, as I'm thinking about this, if I want to repurpose this top, I should probably just go out to Foxidized and get its rails out of what's in there and then that way these ones can actually already stay stapled on why would i rip the staples off here just to go get those guys so let's go have a look out back real quick or out to the side real quick and see let's see so here's our tack rails in here i guess ultimately let me see if i can get this top up Hydraulic fluid pissing all over the place over there. That's fine. Oh yeah. Gooey mess. Oh yeah, look, the seals are just right out of those cylinders. But. Okay. There you go. Foxidize looks like with the top up. <laughs> Cables uh, aren't in any better shape here. See, this will be good. I'll be re able to reuse a lot of my foam padding and everything here. But so, yeah, I think the one for the rear glass is in here and everything. So I'm going to go ahead 
and take all these tack rails out and that's pretty much going to give us an opportunity you know i'll clean these guys up and i'll staple the new top to all this and then the old top i'm pretty much just going to have to re bolt the um the rails in fold it over maybe put some cloth here i don't even care about the cables to be honest with you like the cables are a nice to have they're not a must have and um yeah we'll just have to staple underneath here we should be good Right, guys there we go work smarter not harder got us some nice donor parts here I'm just gonna clean these up and that way like I said we can keep this intact and we can keep this guy intact in fact it makes putting this top so easy onto the other car all we're gonna have to do at this point is a little bit of spray glue on the back here and some staples across the front and this top is pretty much going to be installed it's going to install itself almost so i guess having fox eyes was kind of the perfect opportunity to be able to do this top replacement and you know i mean sometimes things just work out and honestly i didn't even plan for it it just like dawned on me it's like man why rip everything apart just to have to rip all that apart and then staple all the old stuff onto that stuff. It just, it makes no sense. So gonna now go ahead. We'll clean up these rails. We'll get them ready. We'll staple the rear window to that guy. And then we'll get those rails all cleaned and readied up so we can staple the top to them. The rail from Foxidized lined up against the rail that came out. And other than this weird little Whoop, whoop de doo at the end, which who knows? I have a feeling that these were probably straight from what is it, Classic Concepts or whatever the name of the company was that built out the convertibles. And they probably just sort of built these. Or I wouldn't even be surprised if they literally like would bolt in one side and then just like keep bending and tweaking that as they were installing the tops in the car and then ultimately. The contour was a result of them just on how they bolted it in that day. But the important thing is they're the exact same length. All of the holes line up in the same spots, which is extremely important just because you never know, right? That came out of a 87. This one's out of a 93. But the reality is other than the top frame itself, having that difference that makes it go down a little bit lower, Everything else should ultimately be the same. So we're gonna validate the two corner sections here as well. Make sure that those are all good and then we'll get stapling. So again, like if you see how bent up that is, how tweaked this is, and then if you look at this guy, you know how tweaked up it is here. Like they're all the same pieces, but you can tell that these were, what's the word? Um, built on demand or formed to fit however you want to potentially explain it like these bends are not straight in any instance whatsoever but it's all good they will fit they will do their thing now these guys with the studs i'm probably going to steal these and this is the overlap 
So this allows this guy to get bolted down and against the rear quarter of the car. And then this allows you to bolt the rear glass, I believe, where that contours around to this section to get everything nice and tight. So the other car was missing a few of those. Bust out old shawl. I was gonna say old Sally, but it's the old shawl. And uh, we'll be popping some staples. I have done some measuring from the glass to here. It's just under 10 inches and the same pretty much holds true for the new guy. So they've pretty much got these by design cut perfectly, which so far I am impressed with. So if we were to follow that contour, there's maybe a little bit, I mean, just a little bit of overhang, not much, right? So what I'm going to do now, pull that guy down, center this out, and we're going to start sending a couple staples through it. sun I'll get rid of that pull from this side I think that's pretty good all right so now I understand this part was actually zipped up into the top so I do want to change this just because it's going to allow me to change this padding here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo these screws here. We'll get this piece out and we're going to have to repurpose this into the other top. Yeah. next day managed to get all of the uh, what would this be the zipper stapled down to the tack strip and then we got the I don't know tack strip cover screwed back down then this guy will get glue and we'll roll that over like so and that will create a little bit of a buffer got some Padding material down across the sides there. So that's all done. I'm gonna have to see if I can get some of these felt strips right here and um, maybe get these replaced. But now it is time to start doing the rear ends here and getting this stuff stapled on. So kind of like we did with the rear window trying to get everything lined up and I probably will trim and do a test fit. So we've test fit this guy. Everything seemed to be where it needs to be in working. So I'm gonna have to trim out, finish stapling and then trim out all the holes. So that, that way, obviously we can bolt it in. So it'll look something like this, 
All right. Now we need to do the same thing over here. We're gonna stretch, pull, and staple. gonna spray along here we're gonna fold this flap over and then that will get us in a position where we can actually start uh, getting the top assembly back in here now question is do I want to replace I got a new drip tray but I feel like other than this one being dirty this one's actually in good shape so I might leave it for now So we've got our top here and install is not 100% the reverse of removal. So at least the way I do it. So the way that I do it is I actually bolt in these rear pieces first and then it'll allow us to work our way forward and pull and stretch glue our corners, do everything that we need to do, and then we staple across the front and put our final piece on. So, hopefully, big hopeful, that um, all our hard work, I moved the, uh, the studs back over and on here to where they are supposed to be. So you see the ear here? If you look behind, there's actually a piece of plastic. So we actually want to tuck that up and behind this guy right here. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, all these holes, we're going to get those on the studs first. Okay, and once those are on the studs, just pass through, then we're gonna hook this around here. Now's the time to go ahead and we can put all the plates on the studs and get these, you know, bolted down accordingly. So here's something that's extremely important. All right, guys, as much as you know, you want to make sure things are tight, don't tighten the nuts on the plates that are holding these rails. Don't overdo it. And the reason why I'm saying don't overdo it, those studs are on the back side of your quarter panel here. And albeit it's on the inner side of the inner quarter if you over torque that it's still going to pull want to pull the studs and what's going to happen is you're going to create some waves for yourself above your body line and you're going to hate yourself for it in the end and i did it the first time i did a top on my silver convertible now it wasn't that noticeable like i didn't overdo it to the point where i was like oh my god i ruined the car but when I looked down the side of the car, I could tell that I created a little bit of some pressure that wasn't there before. So guys, snug them down, check them later if you want. In reality, there's going to be constant pressure against those nuts and they really shouldn't come loose, but don't be scared, like tighten them, but don't over tighten them. Like if you see the aluminum rails starting to bend, or you see the, the metal plates, these guys starting to bend more than like that, then I think 
that should be a good enough indication that you're tight enough. So I'm gonna go ahead now and bolt these guys in. And then, like I said, we'll leave the rear window to last. Once they're bolted in, we'll do some stretching. Actually, you need to get the cables hooked up. So what'll happen is we'll pull this back enough just to be able to get our cables done. And from there, um, we'll probably fold the top back a little bit. I'll go into detail, but what you wanna do is actually make it so take some of the pressure off so that we can staple everything. And then when the top comes back down, all of the, the pressure is actually gonna put the tension on the canvas and everything that we need to make sure that it's nice and smooth and looking great. So I'll get a little bit of time lapse going here. Hopefully we can get this knocked out sooner than later. tack strip in the front is really thin. It's really brittle. I had to drill and rivet it back in or on in a few different spots. And unfortunately, I just can't get the staples to want to go in and do their thing. So I'm thinking as per the instructions, they say to heat up the tack strip with a heat gun, softens up the plastic, will allow the staples to go through more easily. So that's pretty much where we're at. And my heat gun is at the commercial shop. So I'm gonna have to go get it. But the good news is, I think you guys can get a pretty good idea of what's going on here. And I actually wanna do the front before I do these parts here. Um, it'll just be easier once this is pulled forward and things are stretched out. And otherwise I have to say, I'm really, and again, guys, once this is pulled and this is tight and this is stretched, we're already doing really good back here. This is actually a fold line. So this should actually come right out once this is all pulled and snugged. So there's a lot of guys that worry about the wrinkles back here and that's the key. You have to pull, you have to stretch. I actually took this off and redid stapled down an extra quarter of an inch lower just to pull out any looseness in the material that was right there. But I can start to see it. I can start to see how sexy this car is gonna look with the new top on. You know, I got the cables installed and really just need to be able to heat up that tack strip and get it done. So stick around, hopefully we'll get it. All right, guys, my heat gun was at the commercial shop, so I tried borrowing the wife's blow dryer and it was not getting things warmed up enough. So then I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I just grab the old trusty torch and within seconds, it softened everything up and it'll allow us to do what we need to do. In fact, I think, yeah, it totally just kind of changes the um, dynamics of everything. So I think we're gonna have to work fairly quickly because not only do we have the top, but then we have the trim piece, the, um, I don't know, the beauty trim, whatever the hell you wanna call it, that's gonna have to go on and we're gonna have to chase, um, kind of do the top, then do the trim, then we'll work our way left and right. And hopefully we can get that all done. Got everything stapled along the top and I invested in something overnight. 
That's right, pneumatic staple gun. I think it was about 40 bucks because this guy, honestly, the bottom of my palm is so sore today and that is a million times better. So got everything stapled in up here and I've closed the top to make sure that everything pulls up nice and firm up against here and everything's tight here and everything is you know down on its side covering the top frame on both sides it's really important that you have this centered and that you kind of pull and stretch you know to get around these corners and everything else so now that that piece is on we can put our trim piece again we're going to want to center it we're going to start in the middle and then we're going to work our way down each side folding the corners and just stapling away now the one thing when things get a little thicker here depending what size staple you're using you might i'm on quarter inch staples probably in the center and when i get over here i'll probably end up going to a 3 8 so i'm determined to wrap up the top here now and you guys remember well, i took this guy out this has actually been hit with some trim paint so it's looking good however it had a broken stud which i managed to hammer out through the front side here out that way so i should be able to put a bolt from the back side probably with a lock washer we'll get the spacer on there to match this one and we'll be able to get that guy reinstalled there where it belongs now before i do that i have just loosened off this guy on the back side here yet again to i'm gonna pull this back section down just a little bit more there's a little bit more of a crease here right now showing because this is actually loose and it isn't bolted onto the inside of the quarter panel so that, that way and the other thing is too i'll be able to get more staples in with my nice pneumatic staple gun that i have now this side is pretty damn good there's a little bit this actually has been improving day by day and this one is a little loose yeah see all these those plates in there are on 100 percent so i'm going to do a final test fit there okay after i get this situated here so once that's situated and i'm happy with how everything is looking here all right then i'm going to spray glue in here i've already cut out around where the holes are for the trim right and you can see some of the old glue is still kind of doing its thing so we're going to glue these into place you can see these are looking nice here and i guess that would be another thing that i would recommend guys is that if you leave the top you know kind of i guess on before some of the final last commitment issues it allows everything to stretch and to do what it needs to do so all of this is looking really nice so it should be pretty straightforward in terms of gluing that down putting these pieces in because once these pieces are in they're ultimately going to hold your fabric into place here again on this side see a little bit of old glue kind of coming off just from probably the heat in here so let me get this corner wrapped up we'll get it bolted back in again you see some of this stuff the sun's going to take care of that or even a steamer and that'll solve those problems but let me get this done and we're going to get this top knocked out One thing that I want to stress is when you're tightening these guys back down, like sometimes you got to push down on, push down on those as you're tightening. Cause see, watch, I'm going to push down back here. See how it takes that crease out. Hopefully you guys can see that. So right in here is a little bit of a crease, but watch when I push back down in the back here. 
See how it's stretching it? So just be mindful when you're tightening everything down that you're tightening in a way that it's stretching in your favor to get rid of any of the ripples, all right? And guys, they got some glue in there from factory. It's totally your call if you want to get some. And if you haven't already replaced your weather strip seals, then this would be the perfect time to do so. But it is pressure fit. And I have never used glue after replacing the seals and I've never had issues. And I guess the one good thing about that is if you ever need to take the seal off, you're not gonna wreck it because that is the one problem. Once you glue that seal down, I, you could probably take a heat gun and with a little bit of patience and a little bit of luck, you'll probably be able to get it off. But as you can see, I'm just squishing it in there and again I've never had issues by doing this the weather strip is back on I think we're in pretty good shape I am going to be ordering oh, a little bit there some new felt strips that stick along the sides of the rails like these guys so I'll be able to clean that up just need to get the crossers in now the rails that we slid through those two sections of the top, there's three little Phillips screws on each one. So once I get those screwed on, guys, this is done. Let me catch my breath because guys, do not kid yourselves. This was a full day project, even for me. And I know I've done these in a shorter amount of time in the past, but I probably didn't care as much. And while there's lots of little things, like there was, parts that I ended up fixing. There's parts that I wanted to clean up. Guys, if you want to like go through and completely, I don't know, repaint the actual frame, then you're gonna be taking a lot longer in terms of your time. And the frame assembly is made out of like almost a white metal or some sort of alloy. And in some spots you'll get like that oxidization underneath the paint and it can be a little bit of pain in the ass but you got to ask yourself how much do you really care how much or what are the chances of somebody else that's going to see it if you've got a top liner like i do that hides 99 percent of everything that's going on and in fact that's the only thing that i have left i just need a couple little plastic christmas tree push clips uh, where they snapped off in a few places and then the headliners gonna be completely done and that is going to be a wrap for the top install. So hopefully anything and everything that I showed helps you guys in some way, shape or form or makes helps you make the decision to say, man, I ain't tackling that, I'm gonna take it somewhere. So if you guys do end up taking your Fox somewhere, make sure they've done a Fox body or they're familiar with a canvas top if you're doing that or a vinyl or the differences between them. I think that that's really important because I've seen Time and time again, verts that have had their tops changed and half the hardware is missing or hardware is in the wrong places. And don't get me wrong, is it in there and does it work? Sure, but you know, there's no excuse to be losing stuff or to be putting stuff where it doesn't belong. So I think the number one thing is taking your time, stretching, pulling, and if you got to take like doing a couple tack staples and if you got to take those staples off so you can do some more stretching to get everything in here nice and tight, then do it. Same thing for the rear window down here. 
And like this guy, I ended up taking all the staples off. Mind you, I didn't have it fully stapled down, but there was enough there. I took them off and then I redid the way that I had the fabric on the tack rail and it ended up turning out really, really nice. And my, I guess what I'm most proud of is to have no ripples anywhere in here. The only marks that you see are the fold marks where the top was folded when it came in the packaging, which I'm sure all of this will come out in the sunlight, or maybe I missed a little bit of water on there. I'm sure it'll be good. Now, if you guys need to change your padding, make sure you do that. Cables we went through, and then what I really need are, see these little pieces of felt right here? Actually, here's that oxidization that I was telling you guys about. Like, I'll probably scuff this down and I'll probably brush something on there and then I'll put some new felt on. But, you know, now the top isn't shrunk, so all that isn't exposed. Before you could see all that stuff with the old top. So now what's exposed is, or sticking out like a sore thumb, is all my weathered trim and rubbers and everything else. So maybe I'm going to have to hit those up and get those all nice and clean. And other than that, guys, really happy. Well, I'm happy it's over. I told Lewis yesterday, cause last night when that latch broke on me, I was like, I was spent. I was so pissed off and it was just like, okay, I gotta, I gotta sleep it off and come back to this tomorrow, which now I have knocked it out. It's done. I can move on to installing the style bar. And once the style bar is in, I can move on to the Recaro's. That's if I even decide to put those Recaros in here. Funny enough, those Recaros, I got them for my 86. It's just like, oh, maybe it would be cool to put the Recaros in the car for Foxtoberfest. But honestly, like my leather doesn't have any tears in it or anything. I could probably get that all detailed up. Everything's super dusty in here. Um, I might, let's see what I end up doing. But I can go ahead and get my new headlights in. I'll tint out my fog lights with the yellow. So that, that way, you know, the same look and feel will hold true to the car. And then maybe send this thing off for a proper detail. Guys, this black paint is just, it's seen better days. So I'm hoping that that can get all detailed up. So, oh, what a, this is probably gonna be a pretty long video. Um, I'll try and edit it up best I can for you guys, but hopefully that helps somebody out there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully you guys enjoy the car if you see it at Foxtoberfest 2023. So thank you again for following along. If this has helped you out, be sure to at least like the video. Um, you know, you can hit the thanks button if you want. I do have members only subscriptions that are available. So that way, nice little intimate forum of members only live streams that I do. So you can ask me questions specific to your project or just in general to get my feedback and advice. It's a really good forum to get my attention because uh, it's pretty challenging at times, especially through all the different channels of social media. So as always, thank you guys again. We'll see you here next time on The Infamous Project.